Today in our 2017 Dodge Grand Caravan, we will be installing the Takancha Powertrack Electronic Brake Controller, part number 39523. To ease our installation, we'll be installing our brake controller with our 7-way adapter kit, part number ETBC7. Alright, here's what our brake controller looks like installed. As you can see, it's a nice slimline design, very simple to operate and easy to use. This will easily allow us to control trailer brakes on trailers that have up to two axles, making our caravan a more suitable tow vehicle. Now this LED, when we don't have a trailer connected, there is nothing displayed there, it's just off. When we have a trailer connected, you know you have a functioning brake system when the green light's displayed. When your brakes are applied, you can see that it changes colors to let you know that the brakes are working. Now, this is a time delay brake controller versus one that has an inertia switch built inside of it. Because it's time delay, this will allow us to mount it at any angle wherever we want inside of our vehicle. Now, I wanna point out a couple things here. When we dial down our power of the brakes, when we slide our knob over here for manual override, you can see that our color of the light doesn't change. This is letting us know how much power is being applied. When it's green, there's very little power being applied. When we move the knob up, you can see it goes to like a yellow color, then an orange, and then a red. The darker the color, the more intensity and power is being sent to the brakes in your trailer, giving you more aggressive braking. It's a good suggestion to start with your brakes in the orange position. That's right in the middle. That'll give you a good starting point. You can adjust it down or up to suit your needs or driving style. Now what sets this apart from other brake controllers on the market, besides the fact that it's a time delay unit, is this is a very simple to operate unit. There's no buttons. All you have is your power adjustment knob and your manual override, giving you the, what you need in order to tow a trailer with up to two axles of electric brakes. Now that we've gone over some of the features of our brake controller, we'll show you how to install it. To begin our installation today, we need to find a place to mount our seven pole. We'll be using one of our long brackets here. It's part number 18136. This will allow us to attach to our hitch using the provided clamp. And we'll get that started and we'll tighten down our clamp. Our clamp uses a 516 socket, so we'll use a 516 nut driver. Okay, we'll take our seven pole in our bracket for our seven pole, slide the wires through the hole, insert it into position, and secure it to the bracket with the provided hardware. Okay, with all of our hardware tightened down, we'll slide this onto our bracket that we installed and secure it with the provided hardware. We'll have a flat washer on the bottom, followed by a lock washer, and then a nut. Okay, now where our four pole flat connector is on the back of our seven way, we'll just cut that off. We'll take our existing four pole flat trailer wiring here, measure off about how much we're gonna need, and we'll cut off our connector here too. And we'll separate all four of our wires. Okay, we have our uh, two wires here are white wires or ground wire coming from our connector. We'll cut off the excess here. And our purple wire here is for a reverse light input. We're not going to be using this here today, so we're just going to cut this back off a little short. And we'll tape it up with our wiring bundle just to protect it. And now we'll tape it all up together with the rest of our wires. We'll feed our wires to this hole in our bracket here now. Pull it on up. All right, now we'll strip off some insulation from all of our wires that we cut off from our connectors. And this white wire here, we'll strip off a little bit more than the rest. This is on the side from our four pole flat that was already on our vehicle. Okay, we'll start off by putting some heat shrink buck connectors on our end closest to our seven way. We'll be using blue ones, which are for 14 to 16 gauge wire on the smaller diameter wires. And our ground wire, we'll be using one that's yellow. And this is for 10 to 12 gauge wire. 
Now we'll start connecting them color for color. Now our white wires are ground on the side from our resisting four pole flat wiring. Since we cut off excess, we'll just twist this together, fold it back in half because this is going to a thicker wire on our seven way. This will help bite into there easier. Now we'll take our gray duplex wire that comes with our kit, take a utility knife with a sharp blade, and we'll go right down the middle from one end of the wire, and you'll find there's two wires inside, a black and a white one. We'll just make sure we cut off the covering. Now we'll strip back the insulation from both ends. We'll attach this into our seven way. We'll try to match it up as color for color as possible. So black will go to black. This will be for our power wire that will charge our battery in our trailer. And our blue wire is our break output wire. This will go to the white wire. Okay, now we'll use a heat gun and heat shrink our buck connectors. You can also use a lighter to do this. Just make sure you don't make direct contact with the flame. Now we'll just hide all our wires of some electrical tape here to help better protect it and help prevent us from seeing any colored wire underneath our vehicle. All right, we took a gray duplex wire, which will supply our brake signal and our power wire to our seven way. Ran into the front of the vehicle, making sure we avoided any moving parts such as the suspension or any sources of heat such as the exhaust. We went between the hitch and our stow and go seating area here. Secured to this bracket for our brake line. Secured it here to this bracket for our subframe. Went above our rear suspension here. Went over our rear shock mount. And then down and we went through this hole here for our parking brake cable bracket. And then we secured it to our parking brake cable. We don't have to worry about the cable moving, it won't. We just secured it along this, up to the front of the vehicle, down to where our front subframe is, went over this bracket here, where it's at our firewall now. We'll drop down a pull wire from the engine bay and bring this on up into our engine compartment. So here's our pull wire we dropped down. We taped the end of our duplex wiring to that. Take our pull wire and we'll pull it up. Now we'll take a utility knife here and we'll separate our duplex wiring like we did earlier, all the way down the very end of it. Okay, with that slit all the way down now, we'll just remove the gray outer covering. Okay, now we need to find a place to mount our circuit breakers. Our two circuit breakers in question, we're using a 40 amp circuit breaker to supply power to our seven way in the back. And we'll use a 30 amp to supply power to our brake controller inside the vehicle. We're gonna place these right about here on our windshield cowl. They'll be protected and not in the way of our battery or our fuse box should we ever need to gain access. Okay, we'll just secure these down in place with our cell tapping screws. Okay, our black wire, again, this is going to our 40 amp breaker. This is gonna to connect to the auxiliary side of our breaker. This is the one that's silver. Our gold side's our side that goes to the battery on our vehicle. So we'll just measure off how much wire we need. Cut off the excess. We'll strip off some of the insulation. And we'll attach one of our yellow small ring terminals. Just crimp that down in place. So we'll remove our nut here. So we'll slide our terminal over the stud and re-secure the nut. Well, let's do it finger tight for now. We'll tighten all these back up here once we're done with the install. Okay, we poked a pull wire through our firewall grommet right behind our battery to the side of our brake booster. So now we'll grab our pull wire and pull it out a little bit more and we'll tape our wire to it that's going inside the firewall. 
So here's our pull wire. Our white wire, this is going to our brake controller's blue wire. So we'll tape this to this and pull it through our firewall. Okay, here's our white wire inside the firewall. Okay, our white wire here will measure off how much we're gonna need and cut off the excess. We'll strip off some of our insulation and we'll stick on one of our yellow butt connectors and we'll crimp that on. Now we'll take our brake controller here and this connector here, we'll just cut it off. Our blue wire is our brake output wire. We'll strip off some of the insulation from it and we'll stick it in the other end of our white wire here and we'll crimp it down. Okay, our white wire on the brake control unit itself is our ground. We'll strip off some of the insulation from it. We'll attach a butt connector to it. Now our excess white wire that we just cut off, we'll strip off an end of the insulation from it and we'll stick on to the other end of the ground off the brake controller and we'll crimp that down and we'll pass the remainder of the white wire through the firewall in the same location that our other white wire went through. All right, now we'll go underneath the engine compartment and pull that through. So we'll grab our white wire now, pull it through, making sure we leave enough slack on the inside. Okay, now we'll cut off our excess white wire. We'll be attaching this directly to the negative terminal on our battery, which is the side closest to the firewall. Strip off some of the insulation, and we'll attach one of our larger diameter ring terminals to it. I want to set it aside for the time being. Now our excess black wire that we had, we'll strip off some of the insulation, place on a butt connector, and we'll crimp it down. And this will go to the black wire on our brake controller, which is our power supply to it. So we'll strip off some insulation from it, and then we'll attach that wire as well. And then we'll feed the end of the black wire through our firewall like we did the other two from the inside out. Okay, here's our black wire. We'll just pull the slack out now, making sure we leave enough inside the vehicle. Okay, we'll measure off how much wire we're gonna need to connect to the silver side of our 30 amp breaker right here. We'll strip off some of the insulation attach a small ring terminal to it. Now we need to find the cold side of our brake pedal switch. This is the wire that only has power going to it when the brake pedal is depressed. So we have our test light hooked up to it. The wire that we're going after here is a green and white wire. It's this wire here, closest to the firewall. It's green and white. All right, to make this easier to work with, we'll grab our brake pedal switch and pull back and disconnect it. Now we have some more room to connect our wiring. So we'll take our little quick connector here. I'll slide it over the wire. Okay, with that slid on all the way now, we need to get an extension wire. Let's use some 16 gauge wiring we have laying around. You'll need about two feet in order to do this. We'll slide our wiring on in, take our pliers, and we'll crimp our connector closed. Okay, with that crimped down all the way, we'll take our connector here, close it up. Now I'll plug our stoplight switch back in. All right, once it snaps back in, we're good to go. Okay, we'll strip off the insulation from the two ends of our red wires now. And we'll connect them together with the butt connector. Okay, with all of our connections made inside the vehicle, we can now wrap it up with some electrical tape to help hide the coloring wires. Okay, now we need to find a place to mount our brake controller. Right here to the right side of our dash is a perfect spot. Make sure we have enough slack for our cables to do that. And once we have it in the right position where we want it, we'll slide it down and secure our bracket to the dash with the provided self-tapping screws. They are quarter inch. Now we'll just slide our brake controller into the bracket and secure it with the provided screws. Okay, now we'll take our leftover black wire here and make 
connections from our circuit breakers here and here to the positive side of our battery. Take a breaker. It's a gold or copper color side. Now we're gonna make this so we can actually easily remove our batter if we need to. So we'll just wrap around the side of it. I'll put a large ring terminal on it. Take our leftover wire now, strip off one end. Place a small ring terminal on and we'll crimp it down. We'll attach that to the copper side of our final breaker. Measure off how much wire we'll need and we'll cut off the excess. Place on our large ring terminal and we'll crimp it down. Okay, now that we have all of our connections made to our breakers, we'll tighten down the nuts fully using a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, we'll do our battery connections from our breaker first. It's a 10 millimeter socket right here. We're gonna remove this 10 millimeter nut. Okay, we'll place on both of our terminals that go to our breakers. And we'll replace our nut. And we'll snug that down. Okay, now we'll do our negative. Same process. Okay, originally we were gonna attach our ground wire directly to the negative terminal on our battery post. Well, I found that there's two factory ground positions right here. We'll use these instead because it's less things going to our battery. Go on to the stud and re-secure the nut. And that completes our installation of Deconcha PowerTrack Electronic Brake Controller, part number 39523 on our 2017 Dodge Grand Caravan. Click the link below to shop learn more or visit us at eTrailer.com.